He is the author of the Ord Oracle newsletter. This is Ord-Oracle.com. Go give him a check out too. Uh, really gets into the nitty gritty of these kind of different interactions between the indices and has uh, established a pretty good track record for himself. Tim Ord. Tim, how are you doing today? Good, good. Thanks for having me on again. So, absolutely, absolutely. Um, well, let's take a look I, at what I we got going on today. We got the uh, looking at the XAU and gold. Yeah, actually, I wanted I got a, got a quite a few questions uh, from my clientele, and they kind of. So I'm going to go through, and we're going to start from the bigger picture, and we're going to work backwards down to the smaller picture. Okay. So uh, the first chart, uh, in the middle window is the uh, monthly XAU gold ratio, and it goes all the way back to 1986. Uh, this this chart works pretty well picking out the bigger time frames, bigger bottoms, and all those blue lines across there show the times uh, when actually – when the, when a, when a bicycle is triggered, anyhow, the bottom window is a monthly slow stochastic for the X, for the monthly XAU gold ratio, and when it gets below minus ten, uh, or actually uh, be plus ten, and turns up, usually you're setting at a major low, and we had that happen back in August 2022. As I said, I said on your show, a lot of times you know, I think that August of 2022 was an important low, and this is one of the reasons why I say that. And I got some other, actually, I got about four or five different chart patterns that actually say this uh, same thing that August 2022 was probably an important low. So anyhow, even though the market has made a low back in August, we haven't really broke that low. We've been consolidating here last couple of months, but. Uh, Anyhow, that's on a buy signal uh, since August 2022 low. And go to uh, chart two. Sure. So this is uh, the middle window is the weekly XAU gold chart. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, the monthly gave a buy signal. The weekly also gave a buy signal. And how that buy signal is triggered is when the RSI of the weekly XAU ratio gets below 30. And that happened back in, you know, I think July and September. The two times kind of did a double buy there. And uh, and since then, the market has rallied up uh, some over about six months. And basically over the last six months, it's pretty much gone sideways as far as the XU is concerned. Uh, but those two signals are still on a buy signal. And we can go to chart number three. Okay. And here, here's another method. This is the uh, the middle window is a silver gold ratio, and I usually use, use the gold silver ratio. I flipped it around as a silver gold ratio, just because it kind of goes up and down with the uh, XAU. Well, anyhow, the top window is the XAU. The next window down is the RSI for the silver gold ratio, which is the middle window. Window below that is the rate of change on a 12 period. For the XA for the monthly uh, silver gold ratio, and the bottom window is a percent volume, uh, a percent Bollinger Band uh, for the silver gold ratio. So this is a monthly chart again, and the chart goes back to uh, looks like about 1986 also. Yeah. But when the RSI or actually two of the three indicators that's either the RSI, the rate of change. And percent uh, Bollinger Band, at least two, if not all three, give a give a buy signal. Well, last time that got a buy signal was August 2022, so it currently is on a buy signal too. So that's three different longer term methods that all gave a buy yeah. signal around the August 2022. So, in my opinion, the bigger time frames are still up. We haven't broke the August 2022 low, but we have consolidated uh, for. Was since last September for about last nine months, we really haven't done a lot of anything. So the bigger picture looks bullish. We do think we're at, at an important low, uh, but we really haven't done anything here over the uh, several month period. So let's start looking at right. the, the shorter term time frames, which is uh, chart four. Chart four. So chart four is the uh, RSI for inflation deflation ratio. Right. Okay. And uh, yeah, that, that's the weekly time frame. Uh, so 
the, the top window is the RSI uh, for the uh, weekly inflation deflation ratio. When it gets below 30, and all those blue lines across there show the times when that buy signal was triggered. And that was triggered, uh, I think, in October of this year. We had a minor October low. That triggered that low. We ran up. And we're kind of back down again. What I want to point out, though, is when the uh, weekly inflation deflation ratio closes above the upper or lower Bollinger Band, it's usually at a, a bottom. That happened at the October low, and it's again happening right now, which is that far right, right to the window there. Mm-hmm. You can see that that ratio is, is closing below the lower Bollinger Band. And it's also bearish when it closes above the upper Bollinger Band, which is noted in red across the graph. So that's kind of on a buy signal right now. The RSI is not giving a signal, but the Bollinger Band is. So on a weekly time frame, that's that's also bullish. So let's flip to chart number five. Sure. So we're getting down this now. We're getting down to the daily time frames. So the weekly inflation deflation. Bollinger Band penetration is given a buy. This chart, the top window is the RSI for the inflation deflation ratio. Next window down is the daily the daily inflation deflation ratio. So when the RSI of the daily inflation deflation ratio gets below thirty, which it did last week, then closes above thirty and stays above thirty, it's a buy signal. And that's happened last week. I think I might have pointed that out in my chart last week. can't remember. But it's on a, a bicycle on the daily time frame. So at least on a short term, on your midterm or actually on a longer term scale, I think the August 2022 low was an important low. On a short term scale, we're giving a buy signal right now where this buy signal will determine uh, uh, what this short-term bicycle would determine what happens next in the market. Will it be just another uh, three or four-week rally, or will it be a multi-month, right. it's not a, a multi-year rally? And that's what's determined in the future here. And I know we're going to come up on a Yeah, we're very close to the, the break right yeah, now. Yeah, so I'll, I'll save that for the next next update. But, yeah, uh, yeah, and there, it will be things nice. happening, to... but it seems like it's just very slowly happening here. Right. So. And that's that's what we've been seeing, just like as as you said for for months now, and just trying to get yeah. some action in the GDX. You know, you, you had some you know interesting movement. The GDX kind of gapped down a little bit uh, a few days ago, then came right back up, uh, which you kind of expected with the general like market conditions. But really, getting something that's going to spur it and, and have it run is is going to be phenomenal. Uh, Tim, please stay right there. We'll be right back. Welcome back, folks. This is Jacob Shoup filling in for Tom O'Brien. We're with Tim Ord of the Ord Oracle. Uh, Tim, how are you doing? I think we left Good. off on chart five or six. Uh, five, actually. Perfect. Just a quick comment. Um, uh, the d- daily inflation deflation ratio, RSI, uh, last week closed below uh, 30. Uh, right now we're at 3190, so it's closing above 30. So probably over the last several days, at a minimum, or at least at a short-term low. So here's the so anyhow, we're at a short-term low, I think, on, on GDX, hmm. and the next couple of charts will determine what happens next. How that how the potential current rally will last will last a couple of weeks. Uh, if it does that, then the, uh, it will probably stall the longer-term uptrend. That's what I'm saying. Anyhow, right. this, uh, chart number six. Okay. Uh, the middle window is the uh, monthly HUI gold ratio. And uh, normally when this ratio is rising, gold stocks are outperforming gold. And that's what happens to the uptrends in the gold market and gold stocks. When that, when that ratio is heading down, it's usually a bearish sign for gold and gold stocks. If you notice, it gave a, um, the red lines are when it closed below its mid Bollinger Band. The blue lines are, are closes above the mid Bollinger Band, and it gave a, a sell signal back in 2021. It didn't come exactly at the top because this this is not really designed to catch the exact tops and bottoms. It's designed to catch the trend of the market. So even though the the bottom may have been August 2022. This ratio has not turned up yet, uh, but we're still close to the lows if it does, as far as the uh, XAU is concerned or HUI. But 
to really get a confirmation that the gold stocks have started a multi-month, if not a multi-year rally, is when this ratio closes above the mid-Bollinger band. And so far it hasn't yet. Even though the market's up a little bit higher than August, this ratio has more or less gone sideways mm. since uh looks like about mid well, it looks like about August two thousand twenty two. It pretty much traded sideways, gone up a little bit, gone down a little bit, but it's pretty much unchanged since August two thousand twenty two. The what's important here though, what what seems to be happening, if you notice the Bollinger bands are starting to squeeze on that ratio. Yes. So the ratio really hasn't moved at all, relatively speaking, since August 2022. The bot or the second window up from the bottom is the as as that oh, that 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 determines the narrowness of the Bollinger bands. And so when this is at a low level, or when the Bollinger bands squeeze together, that that chart but right below it will become at a low level. We're pretty at a low level right now. I see matching what happened back in pretty close to 2019 and uh, there's another place 2022 so what that predicts is usually when there's low volatility when the bowler bands squeeze together they'll anticipate high volatility and that's what's probably coming in front of us when will it come will it come in the next several months or maybe wait till next year i don't know but it is saying that that ratio is becoming more will become more volatile in the coming uh, months since this is a monthly chart. Uh, so, what we like to see the current potential rally that's giving a bicycle right now, short term on GDX, HUI, and XAU, is for this for the rally to continue. If that rally continues, most likely this ratio will go up and close above the mid Bollinger band. If it does that then it predicts at a minimum it'll be at least a year rally because if you go back and measure the times between those red lines and blue lines, mm -hmm. it's at least a year. Uh, matter of fact, the last time it gave a sell signal was August 2021, which is over three years ago. So, And it has been on a sell signal since. So if we get above the mid-Bollinger band, that would predict a multi-month, if not a multi-year rally. And that's probably what's coming. It, it, the deal is it hasn't closed above the mid Bollinger band yet. Fantastic. You know, it, so that's the reason why the current rally needs to rally at least, in uh, my opinion, probably two months. If it does that, that probably will close above the mid Bollinger band and we're off to the races. Right on. And flip, yeah, so that's what I'm looking for. For not, let's go to chart seven. Sure. Here's another way. Another way to look at it. The, the middle window is uh, the monthly GDX. The top window is a monthly cumulative up-down volume. Uh, and so it, uh, it also gave a sell signal back in, uh, looks like January 2021, and it's still below its mid-Bollinger band. Uh, this is what the top window is the up-down volume, mm -hmm. and the bottom window is the advanced decline, cumulative advanced decline. And I did a Bollinger band with those. Those two indicators need to close above the mid Bollinger band to give a multi month if not a multi year rally. So two different methods kind of saying the same thing here. Both of them are still below mid Bollinger bands, but most likely if one closes above it, probably the whole thing will. And that'll probably predict a rally that'll be at least similar to the two thousand sixteen low, if not to two thousand nineteen low. Because would we break out of this kind of a downtrend consolidation that's been going on to 2021. Right. So, but we need a rally that lasts at least a couple of months for those two type indicators to close above the mid-Bollinger band. So I'm hoping the current this current buy signal could last, say, into April, uh, ideally May. Uh, that would probably cement the idea that these uh, would give a multi-month signal. So it, uh, it's going to happen uh, if not sooner or later, but it hasn't happened right now. So that's what we're kind of looking for. So things are extremely cheap here. Sure. But momentum needs to turn up, and these are two type longer term momentum indicators. And once they turn up, they usually stay up. They're not like go up and down, uh, back and forth. Usually they start in one direction and they go to direction at least a year, you know, sometimes two or three years. 
So that's what's sitting in front of us. You know, the the deal is, was August the 2022 a low, a major low, which I think it was. And to get that momentum for all gold stocks to go up instead of just a, a few, we need these two type indicators. Uh, and so far, you know, uh you gotta you gotta say you know when I don't know. Um, I, I think I, I thought it would happen sooner than what it has, but they got right back up the mid Bollinger Band. Both these two indicators I'm talking about right now, back in I think no, uh, November or December of last year, I'm thinking we're on our way. Well, it turned back down again. So will this next rally get above it? You know, um, it could. If it does, then it's, it's probably. Uh, a multi-year um, rally for all gold stocks and and probably for most likely silver stocks. So, absolutely. We'll see, you know, that's the bigger picture of what's going on here. So, yeah, and I'm going to post these charts in the den. I mean, I think six was really kind of insightful. I'm going to post all these in the den. And Tim, I I know we only have a short time left here in this segment. We did have a one of our listeners, John Belaya. He asked a. Uh, what your thoughts are on the TLT VIX ratio currently? I don't know if you have anything uh, at the moment. If you address it Thursday or something like that, but yeah, we actually let's take a look at it Thursday. Perfect. Uh, that sounds great. We'll do it. Well, we Tim, because we, we don't have time to do it. Definitely. So we'll talk Thursday about it. Wonderful. Well, Tim, thank you so much. Uh, that was phenomenal. Again, I really like chart six. All of these were great. Thank you so much. You bet. Talk to you then. Absolutely. You and again, that was Tim Ord of the Ord-Oracle.com. Go check him out. Phenomenal. Stay right there.